sitting under this fallen branch here, we have a small snake moving around. And this snake is the desert night snake, Hypsiglina chlorophea. This little snake that we have here, though it might seem little, is actually an adult. The species doesn't get very large, though you can certainly find individuals that are larger than this one. It's the only species of night snake that's found in this area of Arizona. It has quite an expansive distribution. It occupies many of the states of the western half of this country and can even be found at the very southern tip of British Columbia, Canada. And south of the border, a substantial portion of their distribution takes up northwestern Mexico. And as their name, night snake, suggests, these are nocturnal. And unlike a lot of snakes that are nocturnal but can sometimes be found wandering around during the day, these are strictly nocturnal. And what they're out here looking for are small lizards. Around here, the only nocturnal species of lizard is the western banded gecko, Colionyx variegatus. But these are also in search of other lizards that might be resting in rock crevices for example, at night. But in addition to this, snakes in the genus Hypsiglina have been known to go after other herps as well, such as small snakes and even frogs. Though this species of snake and others in the same genus rarely defend themselves against humans, they are rear-fanged and venomous. So one of the first things that these snakes do when they catch a lizard is chew their venom into their prey, and that's typically going to be in the head of the lizard. Tonight we are in the hills of southern Arizona looking for the wandering adult males of a spider called the Tucson bronze tarantula. And this is a fairly common species around this time of the year, so we should be seeing several easily. We have the first tarantula that we're looking for right down here. I don't know if you can see this, but we're in between some prickly pears and there's a lot of dead ones down here. So I'm going to try not to get a spine of my finger. And here it is. This species doesn't have a very extensive range. It's distributed throughout southern Arizona, southern New Mexico, and northwestern Mexico, but in that general region, it occupies quite a variety of habitats. This species can be found in lush deserts, like those dominated by saguaros, drier low deserts, like those dominated by creosote bushes, as well as grasslands and the mountains if the elevation isn't too high. And the wandering period for adult males of this species, like the one that we have here, is a relatively long one. It lasts from late summer to early fall and overlaps with several other species of Aphonopelma, which I will talk about a little bit more later. And as you can tell, these tarantulas are quite docile, and this is a hallmark of the genus Aphonopelma, but especially the wandering males. But that being said, the only tarantula I've ever been bitten by was an adult male in this genus. However, the moments when these tarantulas will bite is when you apply a little bit too much pressure on them. For example, sometimes when you want to look at the ventral side of a tarantula, you'll pinch them on the sides, and they can get quite defensive while doing this. The one that you see here that tried to bite me is also a Tucson bronze tarantula. All right, back you go. We have an Oleos giganteus spider up in this Ocotillo here. And these Ocotillos are quite spiny, and this species of spider is quite flighty, so it might be a little bit difficult to capture. Of any spider that I've shown on this channel, the one that likely has the greatest flight risk is this one. It's the kind of spider that you don't want to grant bond to. This species is most commonly known as the giant crab spider, or golden huntsman spider. And within the family of huntsman spiders, Sporacidae, of which there are a few species in Arizona, this is the largest one found in the state. And throughout its distribution, especially in Arizona, it's a fairly well-known spider, and that's because it's both arboreal and commonly found in the metro area. And this combination means that it frequently enters people's houses. It really isn't uncommon to find these on and around man-made structures at night. But in their native habitat, where these are most frequently found off of the ground, is on rock cuts, saguaro cacti, and various trees like the Palo Verde. And this is the reason that their legs are laterograde. Basically, that means flattened, such that the anterior lateral surfaces of the legs are facing dorsally. Or in other words, oriented like the legs of a Dungeness crab, for example. And this orientation of their legs allows them to move very speedily over short distances while laying very flat to the surface that they're on, which works especially well on rocks. We'll let this guy go back up in the Ocotillo. There's a Capnobodes polygenosis cagedid in this bush here. This cagedid is commonly known as the sooty longwing cagedid. And it's pretty much the end of the season for this species, but despite this, you can still hear males chirping out in the desert. Even though the males are still chirping, the females have already laid their eggs in the ground, which means that all this activity that's still going on amongst the males is in vain. And they typically chirp while perched in trees, and out here, that's most often mesquites and palo verdes. Not all of the city longwings that you can observe around this time are going to look like this, 
But another indication that the season is coming to a close is the deterioration of some of these individuals. You can see that the one that we have here is missing a front foot, a back foot, one of its palps, and the tips of its wings are flaking apart. In addition to the deterioration of the physical parts, there's also a decline in its movement. This kitty did is having trouble hopping. Its coordination of movement isn't all that good, and it's generally quite sluggish. This is one of several species of Captain Bodies that's found in Arizona too. The most notable St. Patrick's being the Western Longwing, Captain Bodies occidentalis, and the Arizona Longwing, Captain Bodies arizonensis. Putting our Katy did back in the bush here. And probably only has a couple more days of its life left. There's a ringtail on the ledge up there. And I haven't seen many of these in my life. Only a handful, really. They're part of a pretty small genus. There's only two species, and this one's Basariscus astutus. It's in the raccoon family. And that means that here in Arizona, its only relatives are the raccoon and the coati. And these really don't like humans, but I guess it doesn't mind me standing here talking with a flashlight in its eyes. I can't tell if this one's limping or not. Almost looks like it's injured. Interesting coincidence on the species, by the way. Just the other night, I found the scat of one that was pretty much just diarrhea. And it had a very large parasite in it. Haven't really looked into what it is. And the scat of the species is fairly recognizable. I think it's ironwood seeds that they eat a lot of. I think this one is finally about to leave my line of sight. It might be a very long time before I see another ringtail, as well as we saw this one. I've got two tarantulas in approximately the same vicinity down here. Here's the first one. And the second one is back here. This is going to take a little bit of maneuvering. All right, nice. I'm wondering maybe if there's a female's burrow somewhere around here, since both of these are here. I'm glad that we found these two particular tarantulas, and that's because I wanted to talk about the size of this species. In the United States, in the genus Aphonopelma, there are the normal-sized tarantulas, and there are the dwarf tarantulas. The dwarf tarantulas typically have a leg span of about a few centimeters. Meanwhile, the larger ones have a very average or typical leg span. In the United States, the largest species would probably be Aphonopelma annex, and the smallest, likely Aphonopelma paloma. But what's interesting about the Tucson bronze tarantula is that it almost bridges the gap between the dwarves and the normal-sized tarantulas in this genus. Of all the larger normal-sized tarantulas in the United States, this is the smallest one. And within this species, the variability in size is such that if you can find the smallest ones, like the small one that we have here, they near the size of the largest adult male dwarf species. And unlike some of the other species of Aphonopelma, Pelma that can be found out here. This one is almost always found wandering around at night. And by the time dawn arrives, these will typically find shelter in abandoned holes in the ground. Here's our first one. And the second one. Right down here on this rock, we have a Scolopendra. The centipede that we have here is commonly referred to as the tiger centipede, or the common desert centipede, but those names are supposed to be attached to Scolopendra polymorpha, and the identity of this centipede that we have here isn't entirely clear. Scolopendra polymorpha can be found in Arizona, but in areas like the one we're in right now, as soon as you get into lower elevations, you start to get these Scolopendra with stubbier terminal legs, as well as various other morphological differences, some of which are akin to the morphological traits of a centipede called Scolopendra veritas, or the Florida blue centipede, and that's a species that can be found in Arizona as well. And these centipedes are most active during the wet seasons, so both during the monsoon and spring, and their above-ground activity is nocturnal, but the easiest way to find them is to look under stones on the ground or other ground debris. Typically, when they're active at night, it's because they're in search of prey, but often when you find these in the ground during the day, they'll be munching on some kind of arthropod that they caught. While this individual and other conspecifics might not be the true Scolopendra polymorpha, these are also quite polymorphic. For example, the bands on this individual are quite thick, but other ones found in the area can have very faint and thin bands. But across the state, there's also many other variations. Found ourselves a frog right here on this ledge.
This frog that we have here is called the canyon tree frog, or in Latin, Hyla arenicolor. And in this state, which is Arizona, this is perhaps one of the most, if not the most, common species of frog found in the mountains, especially near water sources. And this frog also lives in the other states that make up the Four Corners, as well as Texas, and a very large part of Mexico. There are several other species of anurans that live in the habitat that we're in right now, but this is the only one here that is considered to be semi-arboreal. And in addition to this, this species is the most reliant on having access to standing or flowing water. While other frogs in this region tend to sit in the ground in a burrow. When these frogs are not active, they can be found under rocks or in crevices or in the axles of bushes and trees. This species is mostly active at night when they do most of their hunting, but they are also active during the day at times and their diet consists of small bugs, as this species of frog doesn't get very large. The one that we have here is sexually mature. Members of the species exhibit crypsis, and in this case, these frogs are supposed to match the coloration of the soil or the rocks, and this pattern that they have usually includes blotching, like this one does. But it's just the dorsal surface that's supposed to camouflage, and if we look at the ventral side, you can see small orange dots, but also the groin area and the ventral side of the legs is quite yellow. We have our last tarantula for the night down in this bush. I had mentioned earlier that this species is sympatric with several others, but today I'm just going to focus on the ones that it's sympatric with in this area, and that would be Aphonopelma catalina, Calcodes, and Saguaro. It's syntopic with all three of these species, but especially so with Aphonopelma calcodes. Aphonopelma calcodes is this tarantula right here, otherwise known as the Arizona blonde tarantula, or desert blonde tarantula, and this is perhaps the most well-known species of tarantula found in the United States. On average, these are much larger than Aphonopelma voorheesi, but another way to tell them apart is Aphonopelma voorheesi is more uniformly black, or charcoal, with some discoloration on the carapace. Meanwhile, the legs of an adult male blonde tarantula are more of a dark tan, and the carapace is more of a golden color and the abdomen is also quite a bit lighter. And these two tarantulas activity period for adult males are virtually overlapped in entirety. If you're wondering what the female of the Tucson bronze tarantula looks like, this is it right here. These are typically uniformly gray, like the one you see here, but each time they molt, they can be quite black. And just speaking from my own experience, the females of the species, especially adults, are much tougher to come by than the adult males, but perhaps this is because they haven't been to the right areas. Well, that is all of the Tucson bronze tarantulas that we are going to find tonight. So I'm going to end this video here. Thank you for watching.